What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Mezco 112th Collective Supreme Knight Batman. And so here we have the Mezco Supreme Knight Batman posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through his accessories really fast. Supreme Knight Batman does come with several sets of hands. We do get a pair of fists. We get a pair of style pose hands. We get a pair of grip hands. We get a pair of hands for holding the battering. We get a trigger finger hand for his grapple gun. We have a trigger finger hand for the equalizer cannon, as well as a hand that holds the weight of the equalizer cannon. Batman also does come with three heads. He does have the stern expression that he has on him right now. He has a grimacing expression. And then we also do have an unmasked old man Bruce Wayne head. He also does come with 10 little batarangs, which do fit in his batarang holding hand. He does come with a batarang that looks like he's tossing multiple at one time. We do get the big batarang, which looks really nice. We do get the equalizing cannon, which has a lot of nice little details on it. We do get his grapple gun, which does come with three different attachments. We do have the hooks folded in, the hooks folded out, and then a hook with the rope. He also does come with two different capes. We do have a standard cloth cape which just sits on the figure. And then we do have a cape that is wired in five places which that is really good. He also does come with his Mezco display stand with the thicker Batman emblem. And then we do have the Mezco flight stand. Other than that, the Supreme Knight Batman here doesn't come with anything else. So let's actually move on to his details. So here we have a closer look at the Supreme Knight Batman, and this is actually one Batman figure from Mezco. I actually want it when I saw him. It might be my bias toward the Dark Knight Returns, which is probably my favorite rendition of Batman, and that's pretty much what the style they are going here with. This completes their Batman trilogy. This is Batman past his prime in his later years, where he just doesn't care about whether criminals live or die anymore. He's just there to save Gotham by any means necessary and I really love this cowl. This is a really good looking cowl for Batman. You can see it does have some armor plating on it which does look really nice. I really like the short ears. Really re really reminiscent of the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Really love the way this cowl piece just sits right here and it does look really impressive. Mezco did a really good job there. And I really love this face sculpt. This really does look like an Bruce Wayne who is in his twilight years where he is just disgruntled and doesn't care anymore. He's just Batman to cause as much physical harm as possible. And I love this expression on him. Really like the whited out eyes and the really stern expression that he has on him right now. Now, I do have him with the wired cape on, and I do want to talk about the wired cape a little bit. I really like the way this cape is. It does hold the weight in really well, especially here in the front. And something I wasn't expecting is that this cape is actually wired in five places. We do have the two wires running in the front. Then we do have three wires in the back. We have one right here in this seam line. Then we have one going right down the middle. As you can see, it is a little bit folded from the way I've had them standing. And then we do have a third one back here. So Mezco actually went the extra mile and gave us a really impressive cape. Now, let's actually take the cape off really fast. Uh, I do like that the cowl is attached by a magnet, so you can actually have Batman without a cape, which is a pretty nice look for him. Looking at the suit, it's a really impressive suit. Now, I do believe this has been seen before. Uh, I think this is the Tactical Punisher outfit that they gave Batman here, but that's not a bad thing. It actually looks really nice. It does look like it has some armor plating in some areas that Batman would want to protect. He has armor platings on the shoulder, the biceps, even right here on the back, it looks really impressive. So I really like the way this figure came out. Really like it. Now, I'm a little worried about how this material will hold up over time as I am with all my other Mezco Batman figures, but haven't had any issues with the, is it pleather or is it like a plastic? I haven't had any issues with it. I've mainly had issues with the fabric where you can see it has started to stretch a little bit past what it should, which 
I guess that's okay, but it shouldn't really be bunching up like that, and it has stretched out just from the little time that I've messed around with them. Another issue I have noticed is when you try to articulate the head, you have to hold the cowl down to move his head. Because if you try moving the head down, it works normally. Moving it up, you completely pull the head off. Now, this is a really strong magnet. You can see I can hold it right here and it doesn't fall off. But trying to move it, the head back, it wants to pop that head off so badly. And you have to hold the cowl down to get that piece of articulation to work. So let's not dive into articulation yet, but having a look at his utility belt, you can see this is a Batman that has come prepared. The utility belt looks awesome. We do have the front right here, along with two canisters right here on the side, pouches for his gadgets, batterings, and whatever else he would need. And then we do have the holster for his grapnel gun, which it does fit in nicely. Then you can see more pouches. Really love the tech design of these gauntlets. They are really nice. I love just how it looks like he's a brute force in Forza now. And I really do like that about the old man Batman. Really liking the way this material looks right here. You can see they did a pretty good job of replicating Kevlar, which I would imagine Batman would be wearing a bulletproof material. So I do like that. At first, I wasn't really fond of the knee pads. The knee pads were something I really wish they didn't include. But having the figure in hand, I'm not as bothered by the knee pads as I thought I would be. I actually really like these knee pads, despite the fact they're the same color as the boots and not the material. I really do like that. And then you can see a little bit more plating right here underneath his knee pads. Then we go on to his boots, which his boots are really heavy duty. You can see they're all scratched and worn and have so much battle damage on them. But the detailing on them is really nice. The armored plates look good. And then it does look like it has armor plates. Then we have some Kevlar underneath that. And then we go on to these big honking boots that look like they would really hurt you if he really wanted to kick you as hard as he could which he's Batman he probably would kick you right in the face and not think twice about it especially if this is Batman it passes twilight years it's just a really nice looking figure and Mezco did a really good job capturing an older Batman that we've seen before but throwing in their own unique taste so really good job there so with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get Batman pose and compare to other figures you may have in your collection. Here we have Supreme Knight Batman pose next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Supreme Knight Batman pose next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. And finally, here we have Supreme Knight Batman pose next to a Hasbro Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at his articulation. Now we're going to take the cape off just so we can go on to the articulation without the cape on. Batman does have a double ball joint here in the head, which means he can look up to about right there. He can look down right about there. He can tilt his head side to side really nicely, and I do like that. Now again, one issue I have noticed is that when posing the head, you do have to hold the cowl down because... If you don't, you will pull it off the magnet. And like I said, it is a fairly strong magnet. It's just not strong enough to support moving the head back. Uh, moving the head forward, it seems to support it just fine. But moving it back, that's where the problem lies, unfortunately. Now, it does appear that Batman here does have double uh, butterfly joints because I can pivot the joint in and out a little bit, but it's not too extreme. It might be a ball socket going in, but I can't really pivot it up and down, so it might just be a slight forward and back movement. It does go up to the side really nicely. Unfortunately, it doesn't go all the way around, but it does go up to about there, and you can see the material start bunching up right here. So I do worry about that, and it honestly feels like the material is getting loose just from me messing with it like that. He does have a bicep swivel right here, which does work fine. Double bend in the elbow, giving us a little better than 90 degrees. He does have swivel right here at the gauntlet. We do have a swivel hinge here at the wrist, so we do have up and down movement. Then we can move that joint to have in and out movement as well, and it does rotate on that peg. Now, I don't know what's going on with the torso joint. The upper torso does seem to want to have some give, like it does flex, it goes back, goes forward, 
leans to the side really nicely and does turn. But the lower torso, I can't seem to find out exactly where it is. I don't know if it's underneath the utility belt. Okay, right there it is moving back a little bit, so it did have some give. Yeah, it he does have a lower torso, but it's really stiff on mine, and it is really resisting me, so I'm not going to try messing with it. But he does have a lower ball joint, which should rotate more than mine is, but it's just fighting me. Legs do kick forward all the way horizontally, which works fine. Goes back to about there kicks out to the side really impressive and I do like the fact that the material doesn't stretch but again it does seem to stretch because it's not as form-fitting as it was when I got it out of the packaging so that might be a universal issue with this figure double knees do a really good job there I forgot to mention he does have some thigh rotation which works fine and again the material does move out of the way but you can see it is starting to get loose on mine so do mind the posing on him because that might be a universal thing. We do have a boot swivel and then a ball joint for the foot which does go back and forward, pivot side to side and then has some rotation. So overall pretty good articulation here on Batman. My only concern is the costume because it doesn't feel as uh, good as the Sovereign Knight Batman and that was a really nice outfit so I do worry about the integrity of this costume. Other than that, posability on him is phenomenal. I really like the way he poses. So with that out of the way, guys, let's get him posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have the Mezco 112th Collective Supreme Knight Batman posed for my final thoughts. And overall, I really do like the way this figure came out. This is probably one of my favorite Batman figures that I own. I might be a little bit biased because of its resemblance to The Dark Knight Returns, which, as everybody knows, is one of my favorite Batman storylines. I really like the way Mezco made this figure. Now, there are some things I would have changed. I honestly would prefer Mezco only give us the wire cape because I really don't think the regular cape does anything for me. I mean, I like having some display options with my capes, and I think wires in the cape are a really good idea, and I think Mezco should stray away from the capes that just lie down and move more toward the wired capes because as it stands the interchangeable head does make him a little bit tricky to pose because you want to get his head posed just right and you accidentally knock it off and that's something I really don't like but other than that I think he's a really solid figure now I do warn that the material used on this Batman does seem kind of thin and I really don't know how the integrity on this figure will last me, I have not had any issues with it other than it's stretching in some places. But I know a lot of people like to keep their figures in pristine condition. And this figure might not be that figure because the suit does seem like it stretches a little bit. Whether or not that's a make or break thing for you, that's up to you, the viewer and the buyer, to decide. For me, personally, I really don't mind. It adds some realism that this Batman is war-torn. He's going... He's just going through the motion and he's just pummeling people for the sake of pummeling people. He comes with a decent batch of accessories and I really do like the display stand that he got. If I could change one thing, I think I would have given him a cowl down, but it really does feel like the cowl on him is more of a helmet than a cloth, so I can see why they, for, they decided to do away with the folded down cowl. So the Sovereign, or the, the Supreme Knight Batman, excuse me, this is Supreme Knight Batman, not Sovereign Knight. Supreme Knight Batman here will run you $85, which is what Mezco is starting to charge for the figures in general. So it is a little bit of a markup, but $5 is nothing. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get this from the Mezco site. Thankfully, the good folks of Asylum Comics were able to track somebody who was selling it at retail, and I only paid $85 for it. You will end up paying $85 for this Batman currently, and you can still get him on websites such as Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, or Amazon. And I really do recommend you pick him up if you're a Batman fan, because I do see his value going up, just because he is another version of Batman. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and go check out all my other action figure reviews, as well as all my other Mezco videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments, and if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos, and as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. 
Take care, everyone.